a bridge is much more than just a means to cross an obstacle, getting over a river or railway. It's much more about a, a sense of place. It's about creating an environment that wasn't there before. In this short set of videos, I hope to show how the bridge engineer must deal with more than merely the functional aspects of crossing the obstacle, whatever it is. And look as well at the environmental, social and cultural issues that make the difference between just a bridge and an elegant landmark that people love. My bridge design projects have varied from the very small, like the Bridge of Aspiration in Covent Garden between the Opera House and the Ballet School, to the very large, the Messina Bridge, for example, between Italy and Sicily, the mainland of Italy to Sicily, 3.3 kilometres in a single span. I've been fortunate enough to work with some of the world's leading bridge architects and have won a number of competitions with them, such as the Pont Schumann in Lyon, France, the Stonecutters Bridge in Hong Kong, and the little aluminium footbridge, the Loch Meadow Bridge in Maidstone, Kent. But my work has not just been about bridge designs. The early part of my career was spent almost entirely looking at existing structures, assessing them, understanding how they worked, learning from the mistakes that previous designers may have made where maintenance, for example, had not been properly considered. And those lessons have been very instrumental in my design work later in my career. Bridges connect people, they link communities. And a bridge is going to create an, op an opportunity for people to get to market or to school or to hospital, which wasn't there before. And the engineer needs to understand how those factors will influence the design. A bridge across a river is very often a catalyst for a new city. Think of London, Paris, New York, places where the bridge was the, probably the first thing that people did in order to develop that town. So no surprise then that the bridge is significant for the culture, the society, the people that live there, and the engineer must understand that. Bridges are designed by civil and structural engineers, but of course we very often work with architects, landscape designers, urban planners and so on. And the most successful designs come from an integrated approach between those disciplines. The engineer's task is to deal with the technological issues, construction, material, materials and so on, um, in addition to the environmental, the social, cultural, understanding those things. And of course today we're asked to span further and to build more quickly and always, of course, with elegance and uh, with aesthetic appeal in mind. So an engineer needs to enjoy a challenge. Inevitably, bridge design involves teamwork, sometimes with several organisations involved. But I find that it works best when there is an overseeing mind, there's somebody who has the complete picture, even down to some of the important little details. So although he or she um, uh, can't do everything and will be supported by engineers and others doing analysis and calculations and drawings and all those things. He or she will need to be uh, sufficiently uh, alongside and across all of those issues to be able to know how the whole package fits together. Sometimes you may divide the project, uh, the bridge, into components. So the obvious one being the superstructure and the substructure. And we sometimes worked where one company is doing foundation design and the other company is doing the superstructure, the, the bits you see. And that, that works well. You could also divide it in other ways, depending on the size of the bridge and nature of the bridge. A great bridge needs to do more than just span the gap. It needs a character all of its own. It's relatively easy to, to make it work, to have enough material to, to make it strong and stiff and so on. What people really notice, indeed what people really demand, is much more. They want the appearance to be good. They want to, something which touches their soul. And, and you need to feel that sense of delight. And that's going to make a difference between an ordinary and a special bridge. What does it look like from a distance? How does it feel close up? Is it a place that you want to say to your girlfriend, let's meet at that bridge? And you know, how does the top of the tower look against the night sky? These are the things that, that really make a difference. For me, some of the great bridges include um, Maillard's Saguenay Tobel Bridge in Switzerland, high up in the hills. It's the most beautiful, elegant, white concrete arch. Um, 
technically brilliant, but also just so beautiful and so so wonderful in its setting. Um, the Mio Viaduct in south of France, Michel Villager, the engineer, obviously engine, uh, also with architecture by, by Foster's. Uh, again, a beautiful response to an, uh, an extraordinary setting with a very deep valley and this sort of rhythm of the seven pylons um, uh, just so beautifully done on a gentle curve. Fantastic uh, bridge, a great favourite of so many. In Denmark, the Great Belt East Bridge, a suspension bridge um, over open water, so a very different kind of context, but uh, where the sculptural form of the towers, the anchorages, the whole whole composition just works so well. The architect Dissing and Weitling, Paul Owe Jensen in particular, working with the engineers Coe on that one. And here in London, a completely different scale, the small and delightful Sackler Crossing by John Pawson in Kew Gardens, where the engineering is really nothing, but it's such a beautiful piece of, of sculpture, really. Um, very elegant, uh, a beautiful composition uh, on, a, on a sort of S-shape in plan. So these, for me, um, epitomise some of the things that uh, we try to, to do when we design bridges. In part two, we're going to look at um, more about how we do it. But in this first part, we've understood that a bridge needs to be much more than just a crossing. Uh, we've, we've looked at how a, a bridge designer needs to learn from history and from others by, by, by studying uh, other cases before they can really be effective as a designer. We also need to understand the cultural, the social, the environmental issues, and that's a really important part of uh, being able to design a, a really good bridge. We've, we've looked at the importance of teamwork, and how although, as in my view, an engineer must lead the design of a bridge, there are others, architects, landscape designers, lighting designers, and so on, who will be involved from time to time. And also, it's really important to understand that bridge design is much more than just applying the codes of practice. We've got to look beyond that and take your pencil and a blank sheet of paper. And we're going to look at that next time.